If you make comics or webtoons, you could be making them significantly faster while reducing your workload before you even start drawing. When you're a webcomic or webtoon creator, you know what it's like drawing a bunch of illustrations every update, and that takes time. Some platforms encourage as many as 70 panels per update, which back in my day we rushed out a page a week and we liked it. Anyway, here are 10 tips for making comics faster by reducing your workload. I encourage everyone to use references as they work, but finding references is another part of the process that can take a while. Sometimes I'll take awkward photos with my phone or webcam to reference, hoping from the bottom of my heart that no one else ever sees them. And you might already know that you can use 3D models and pose them for reference, but remember that the perspective limitations of a digital lens can vary, and you can work your butt off, but the overall look might still feel wonky if any element hits the uncanny valley of perspective. But hey, on the flip side, sometimes a wonky perspective is also a great stylistic choice that makes a work even more memorable. You can push more depth into a panel and distract from those uncanny elements by throwing a foreground element in. Defocus or give it a deeper, darker level than the rest of the composition. This can help make the reader feel more tangled within and immersed in the environment just by slapping some stuff in front of the camera. Obviously don't do this for every single panel, or you know? You could actually. That could actually be an interesting idea for a short comic, something with limited pages. While we talk about limitations, I mentioned this in my other video, 10 tips before starting your comic, but consider scaling your story down. In that same way, I encourage you to set limits. Limitations may be the most unlikely of places to harness creativity, but perhaps one of the best ways to get ourselves out of ruts, rethink categories, and challenge accepted norms. Instead of working forward a page at a time, set a limit at the gate of how many panels a project is allowed to be, or how many chapters, maybe how many characters even. This prevents the scope from becoming overwhelming. I encourage you to brainstorm. If you could only tell a story in three panels, how would it go? What if you could only add one mid-story panel to flesh it out? Why stop there? Maybe limit the color palette too while you're at it. If you make these decisions early and you plan the project around it, you'll be more likely to finish because the end of the tunnel is in sight from the beginning. And it means that you can make choices in the story based on the limitations that you're setting. If you're making any assets ahead of time, like a background that you intend to reuse, you might be able to use it in a scene in the second act and write it in from the start, which means that you can also make the usage of coming back to that place mean something in your story as it takes place in that location that you've already drawn before. It's making choices like this from the start that can help save you time in the long run, like giving yourself micro deadlines for individual tasks. I made a video about a comic tracker I modified and I use for my projects. I like setting a pre-deadline a month at a time to hit a certain percentage of completion. Trying to reach that percentage as soon as possible usually means that I get it done way ahead of when I planned. And the rest of the time left over just feels like earned rest, but I'll still have it as a buffer before the actual deadline just in case. I think it's important to use that resting time, however, to fill up your creative input tanks by consuming media by other artists and spending time with your loved ones. Get inspired, because you can love your project to bits, but you can't pour from an empty cup if you're burning out on writing and producing and networking and everything else that you have to do. Which, <laughs> burnout. Let's talk about it. By the way, shout out to my patron constellation and viewers like you. Thank you for helping me pay my rent and buy groceries. Burnout and comics kind of go hand in hand, which is why it's often recommended to have a backlog of pages as a buffer while you're working. Harsh truth, but it's not an immediate gratification for most creators. The low ROI can lead to burnout even faster as it's admittedly an emotionally draining thing to deal with, spending hours of your life on something for only a few people to see it. But by the time that your story is complete and has the chance to resonate with more people, word of mouth and recommendations can bring you new readers years later than the comic was being produced. And I'm in favor of backlogs, not just for the buffer, but because work goes faster when you're batching specific tasks and you're not giving yourself the chance to feel the hurt from the high effort to low ROI when you start publishing online. All the script and revisions, all the panel setups and typeset, sketches, lines, flats, shading, refining, try by chapter or by episode, or a whole project at a time to be published at a later date. Production in this format by yourself will always be faster and less work than page by page, I assure you. And hey, while we're here, set some limitations. Maybe this project doesn't get shading, or you're keeping it sketchier from the get-go. With batch work, it means that you have to wait to start putting out your comic, but that means that the entire time that your comic is being released, you'll have recovered from the exhausting task of making the comic, and you won't be too burnt out to authentically market and promote it. Not having to divide your attention and switch gears will take less energy. Less energy means more work done with decreased odds of burnout. It also means that if a certain panel is giving you trouble during the line art phase, you can just jump around and work on different ones before coming back to it. And you're not pressed to get that specific panel done for tomorrow's upload, you know? This method helps you learn how to say good enough. You might have a specific eye for your project, and this tip is going to seem heinous to you, but if you're really struggling to get each panel done because you're stuck in the mindset of every panel is an illustration, only your diehard fans are going to analyze every panel that you create, which is a small percentage. Definitely give them some eye candy from time to time. But not every panel is a masterpiece. It's a stepping stone in the story that you're telling. Sometimes you don't need to render out every background detail or individual jewel in an outfit. Doing so would distract from the point of the panel. If two characters are having a heated argument, unless the environment is tied to that argument and things are shifting, 
You do not need to include it in every single panel when the shot changes. And if you don't have background assets that you're reusing, try some halftones, textures, gradients. You can still be creative while saving yourself time. Also, figure out what your comic style looks like defocused. Is it sketchier, radial blurred like a lens? Are the levels of color simple or is the line art thicker? Consider what full detail looks like and consider what shortcuts lead to shorthand abstractions in your art style. Because these decisions about limitations and abstraction made early can become huge charm points to your readers. From page count to intentional style abstractions, you can set your own limitations, utilize DIY references, and significantly reduce your workload before you even start drawing. It's all about that pre-production mindset. Work smarter, not harder, right? Oh, and uh, check this one out next. Take care!